The following video demonstrates methods for detecting and removal of sessile serrated polyps. In this example, we see a polyp arising in the upper left corner of the screen with characteristic features of a sessile serrated polyp. It's often indistinct with a cloud-like surface pattern with subtle serpiginous small mucosal vessels. In order to completely remove these, we typically inject a saline solution with a blue dye, usually indigo carmine, and a low concentration of epinephrine, typically 1 to 100,000. Often the injection, particularly with the blue dye, better highlights the margins of these lesions, which can sometimes be very difficult to see with normal endoscopic methods. Notice there is a small amount of polyp tissue from an adjacent polypectomy unrelated to this particular sessile serrated lesion. We inject the lesion, typically beginning on the back side first, working towards the front side of the lesion, or the side nearest the endoscope. We inject sufficient fluid in order to enti entirely lift the polyp, plus a small amount of lifting adjacent to the lesion. The snare resection usually requires a stiffer snare, usually a spiral snare, or one with very sufficient metal uh, stiffness in the metal gauge to obtain uh, a good margin. We typically uh, place the snare over the lesion and push down into the wall while suctioning the air out of the colon to allow the tissue to lift up into the snare uh, lumen. The lesion is then resected with either a blended current or in many cases we now use a pulse cut or endo cut mode to minimize cautery damage to the margins and the deep base. As is often seen with sessile serrated lesions, the, there is some residual serrated tissue at the margin, and it's very important to recognize when there is an incomplete resection, which has been shown to be the case in up to one-third of such lesions. In this case, we can extend the resection by simply snaring tissue adjacent to the original margin to ensure that we have a complete resection with negative margins all around the lesion. When placing the wire uh, for the adjacent tissue, it's important to ensure that the wire is placed in the same submucosal plane to ensure that you get a contiguous resection with no uh, residual tissue in between the different resection sites. You can see here the wire placed uh, just in the base, uh, at the ba base of the original resection and extending outwards with the wire grabbing uh, through the same submucosal plane. You can see as we inspect this site carefully, particularly as the wire is closing around it, that there is some residual serrated tissue with the same small serpiginous vessels. In some cases, if there's uncertainty as to whether there's a complete resection, we can cauterize the margin using either argon plasma coagulation or, more efficiently, the simple tip of the snare. We expose one to two millimeters of the snare tip and then apply a low voltage or soft coagulation current to the margins. Some studies have shown that this reduces the recurrence rate of the lesion, although this has not been confirmed in all studies. In this case, the final pathology showed a serrated adenoma. We would typically have this patient return in three to six months 